but this morning before we go into the prayer line I want to continue the topic that we've been talking and how many of you guys enjoyed last Sunday when Pastor Ilya was sharing about financial breakthrough <laughs> how many of you went back to the local stores and returned some money no no you haven't got convicted that deep okay okay I met a father once in uh, just a few weeks ago he said pastor uh, he, said, he told me he said Vlad uh, my son stumbled on your YouTube clips and he said and God touched him while he was watching the sermons and he came across a few sermons where you I guess uh, where you talked about returning what you stole he said he went to stores and gas stations and started returning so much stuff he said literally revival start happening in those stores because of his testimony and so he just really wanted to thank me so God is on the move even within our church and outside in Jesus name amen we welcome those who are watching us on live stream typical services we have over a thousand to two thousand people by the end of the day re-watching our services and so we welcome you everywhere you are watching God is with you and this, this is not a barrier for those who believe amen we're gonna talk about today uh, part four about the rhythm of revival and we're gonna deal with the issue of depression we're gonna deal with the issue of anxiety and we're gonna deal with the issue of nightmares how to receive freedom that that comes from Jesus and that also comes in our growing of Jesus the statistics says that anxiety has become the number one mental issue in North America it's estimated one-third of North American adult population experiences anxiety 41 percent of employees from a range of industries reported high levels of anxiety in their workplace more than half of college students sought help for their anxiety issues 65% of North Americans take prescription medication daily and 40% of them take mood altering prescriptions. By the way, the notes that you will see here, some of them are in a smaller uh, print here, even though I asked them to make it all in one for each uh, quote. They're also on the Bible app. If you have a version Bible app, go on the bottom, it says events, click on the events. You will find all the notes here for those of you who may not be able to see it from a distance. Depression, anxiety and stress has been an epidemic in our generation, especially in the United States. And behind that is not just natural stresses and the hardships. Behind that many times is the forces of evil. If you have your Bible and if you don't, you can look at the screen. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says the following. Come to me all you who labor and who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest. I want you to see this. I will give you rest if you come. If you take my yoke and learn from me, you will get your own rest. Means you will find rest. And yeah, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The first freedom or the first way to receive peace and to receive freedom from depression and to receive freedom of anxiety and stress is number one is deliverance. Jesus said come to me. Come to me speaks of when you come to Jesus in need for salvation or for deliverance. Stress comes from three main reasons. One demands of service. Demands of service meaning when you are working so hard either for God or for your work and you start experiencing fatigue. The Bible says even Jesus after he healed somebody felt power leave him. Demands of service. When you serve you lose power. When, you, when your phone serves you it loses battery. When your car serves you it loses gasoline. When you serve you experience fatigue. That's normal. The number two reason where the stress comes from is demise of sin. It's when you not only you serve but when you struggle or you indulge in sin. The scripture says Samson after he sinned he woke up and the Bible says this power left him. Many people experience leakage of power in their life and experience loss of peace and experience anxiety and stress is because of their sinful lifestyle, sinful friends and sinful habits and sinful places they go to. If they would only learn to find freedom from those places and those things they will experience peace and they will experience good night's sleep, a sense of life and a purpose in life demise of sin and number third the reason where the stress comes from is 
Satan is where Satan and demons attack people whether it's through their sin or whether it's through generational curses meaning it's been going on from one generation to another where everyone has always been on pills for this particular issue where everyone's always been having nightmares in the family where they've always been experiencing depression and anxiety and sadness sometimes these demons or satan comes upon people after the funerals because the demons they don't die demons get passed on and the places where demons get passed on the most is in the cemetery when the person dies that demon that tormented the person's life begins to go on the mother or i'm sorry on the daughter or the mother if the daughter died or on the son or the father that's why you find many people after they lose their loved ones cannot get over it or recover from it it's not just emotional loss it's a demonic attack where the demons are attacking that person when elijah experienced service he served god and he became exhausted and he started to you know run and become actually suicidal where he wanted to kill not, not kill himself he wanted God to do that for him he wanted to kind of make it make it easier on himself and he said God I don't want to live and all this stuff and God says you know what you've been working too hard Elijah you just gushed out 400 prophets he just brought a revival you're tired and so God gives him you know two things for people who are tired from the service sleep and food angels brought him food and God told him to sleep and after that he became strengthened but Elijah wasn't running because he was tired. Elijah was running because of Jezebel. Jezebel was a demon and that's why it caused him to panic. It was a demonic attack on his life and eventually not Elijah but Jehu when he threw that witch from that house and that spirit was broken even over that nation we see that things started to shift and things started to change. There are demons of heaviness demons of depression demons of phobia demons of nightmares where the bible says god gives us a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness heaviness is not just an emotion many times there is an evil spirit and you will feel that you will feel something sits on you you will sometimes even walk into a service and everything is fine and just something begins to change and it's a demon that wants to torment it doesn't always mean you're possessed sometimes it just simply means that you're being oppressed by the devil but with the power of the holy spirit you can experience freedom sometimes right there you can literally resist that stand against it and listen put up a fight where you say listen devil you're gonna go down you're gonna be gone you're gonna be removed and i'm gonna come against you in jesus name you don't have to wait for someone to pray for you when you experience an attack an anxiety attack or a depression attack because the same power that exists within the preacher exists inside of you can somebody say amen in in catholicism they have four levels of demon possession in the Catholicism teaching and Catholicism is a lot more advanced in the issue of casting out of demons than Protestant churches unfortunately and um, and they have the first level of demonic activity when the priest would counsel or do exorcism the first one is inhuman demonic activity it means it's hunting it's when houses are being hunted in places are being hunted or a particular things are being hunted and so many times you will see priests actually exercising not a not a person deep from a demon but a place that's why you see in a lot of even movies as some of you who grew up more in the catholic background you know many times you will invite the priest to come and, and purify the house and partially because we even see that in the scriptures where demons can be attached to things and demons can be attached to places and so if you move into a certain place or certain house it's very important to sanctify it because the first level of demonic possession is not starts with people it starts with places because if a demon cannot affect a person he will try to torment the person through the place they're living in through the car they're driving through the toys they're wearing or through other things the second level is torment or vexing or we call a christian oppression and this is the part where and i'm just going to read you this exactly from their their book it's when the individual is harassed by a demon that has targeted the person so the person is experiencing this harassment or torment the demon most likely is on the outside and it torments them and ex they experience that the third one is oppression obsession i'm sorry obsession is when not only the demon is now tormenting them but this person 
has become obsessed as it seems like to those of us who are on the outside looking at the person become obsessed with that particular feeling or that particular thing they cannot shake that off they cannot shake off depression they cannot shake off anxiety they cannot shake off intrusive thoughts they cannot shake off the nightmares it's literally like an obsession that demon has grabbed hold of them and this is the level where according to Catholics and I believe the same thing even within our Protestant faith where most of the problems happen is when people cannot shake it off and the last one is possession it's when the person completely begins to lose most of their control over their life and that control is given or taken by demons and these cases are very rare a lot of them are extreme cases and nevertheless they still exist but I want to let you know and I'm not sure if we mentioned that before but it's worth reminding even if Satan takes 99% of your will the 1% you have is more powerful than the 99% you don't you have to understand God in first when he created us he trusted us we, we always say we believe in God God believes in you before you ever could believe in God God already believed in you by trusting you with his oldest and most deceptive cunning and most crooked enemy an enemy that tricked heaven heaven you and I are planning visualizing how it is gonna be Satan was there and he wasn't there for a little trip for a testimony he lived there that's the only world he knew and he was able to trick many people from there to rebel against God and this enemy that God has God put him under our feet on our first day of creation we didn't finish deliverance school we didn't attend Bob Larson's classes we didn't read Derek Prince books we didn't show up to TB Joshua's classes on the first day we didn't even know who Satan is and God already put him under our feet God trusts you before even the blood before the Holy Spirit power the humanity is made in the image and likeness of God there is power in even your self-will and Satan recognizes that that's why never believe a lie that no matter what you're going through and how much the devil has taken that you cannot fight back even if you got a little bit left use that little bit and fight back the Bible says if the lion came and he ate everything except the bone the ear and little bit of the mouth he says that God uses to fight back the bone and little bit of the ear but that's enough to begin to create a resistance against the devil do not give the devil too much credit rise up inside battle that and you will win that in the name of Jesus the first way we overcome anxiety and depression and these things is by deliverance the second way is by taking the burden and the yoke of Jesus Jesus said take my yoke and my burden take my yoke so we receive rest by yoke and by burden I understand this is an oxymoron it's kind of like a government service and if it's a government it's not a service or Microsoft works <laughs> if it's Microsoft it will not work and when you see rest by yoke and burden you're like well I'm coming to God to get rid of this and this and Jesus says if you come to me I will give you rest but I want you to see something he's not giving you everything when you come to him he's not giving you everything when you he delivers you if he would he wouldn't have any more to give you when you get his burden and his yoke this is very powerful you don't get everything by deliverance you don't get everything by salvation positionally and legally yes but practically no because if you would Jesus wouldn't say learn from me take my yoke upon yourself and then you find rest the fact that you still can find more rest indicates you don't have all of it when you come to him you don't get all of it when you come to him I always say like this is there's rest you get by coming to Jesus and there is rest you get by growing in Jesus there is deliverance you get by coming to prayer line there is deliverance you get by developing a prayer life 
there is deliverance there is healing you get by coming and having somebody anoint you with oil and there is healing you get when you begin to apply the word of God in your personal life he said you will find rest when you take my yoke yoke in the Bible is always symbolic of relationship and covenant do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers meaning you are connected with this wooden beam to another person and together you're kind of stuck and Jesus says I want you to have a yoke with me let's get yoked together I think we should start using that in a relationship instead of saying let's hang out together we say let's yoke together <laughs> you want to get yoked with me it's like what the heck is that you're like it's it's in Hebrew it, it means it means something wonderful so Jesus is asking you if you want to be yoked together and before you flip out, before you freak out and before you're like Jesus give that to the pastor, give that to my enemies. I don't want no yoke, just love from you and that's it. I want to let you know Jesus knowing that our view of a yoke with him is many times disturbed by religion or by people who claim to be in a relationship with God but live such a boring life that you're like if this is what heaven looks like say Lord deliver me from that. Jesus says my yoke is easy. If your relationship with God is burdening your life something is wrong not with relationship and not with God with your perception of who God is. Jesus never compared his kingdom to a funeral, always to a feast. God does not want to be bored and you to be bored with him. Relationship with God is never to be endured, it is to be enjoyed. He loves you too much to see your relationship with him as a rigid. He wants to see it as easy. And I remember when, um, you know, yeah, I would experience time in prayer where it was very hard or very difficult to break through, you know, and you kind of like, man, I just don't want to pray again. It's so hard. It's, it's truly yoke. But if it's not easy, this is where you have to ask yourself a question. What's going on with me? What is wrong with my mindset? Why am I seeing like that? And one time I remember a, a, just a gentle whisper in my heart where I kind of complain and grumble how hard it is to be a Christian. And... Um, the Lord said, Vlad, it's not hard to love me. I'm perfect. It's hard to love you. You're not. <laughs> if you think it's hard to love God who gave everything, created you and gives you a son that doesn't charge you for rent when you breathe air. If you think it's hard to love God who gave you the Holy Spirit and who sent angels to protect you and literally you cry and he answers. That if you think that is hard, I want to remind you, it's not hard to love God. It's hard to love you. It costs you nothing to love God but it costs God everything to love you and so God's yoke is easy. God wants you to update your thinking, update your mind. To have a relationship with God is not rigid, hard and painful. God doesn't looking for martyrs. He's looking for lovers. He's looking for a bride and he wants you to update your thinking about that. Can somebody say amen? amen. Take my yoke and he says take my burden. The, the word burden right away sends negative vibe. I'm pretty sure you're like yeah that's right Lord I just want more burden. How many of us walk around say Lord just increase burden in my life. We walk around say Lord get, get that thing off of me. I do not want any burdens in my life. But Jesus says my burden I want to give to you. Why? So that you can find rest in your life. You were never created to be without a burden. The question is if you refuse the burden that comes from the Lord you will automatically sign up for the bondage that comes from the devil. The burden from the Lord is God's passion for people. The burden for the Lord is life with intention to see others being touched by God. Burden from the Lord is when you live your life and you invite your co-workers to Jesus. Burden from the Lord is when you become the channel for the Holy Spirit to heal through you. The burden from the Lord is when you become a channel instead of a reservoir. The burden from the Lord is when you live your life for other people and it's not something you only have. It's something the Holy Spirit gives you. Many of us when we begin our Christian life we get burden by ourselves. Means you hear a pastor saying you need to evangelize. You hear a testimony that you need to go out and witness. You hear a testimony to start a home group and so you get charged up. You got some batteries, you got some passion and then you are running with it until you hit dry. Until you come to a season you become empty, you burn out. You realize 
you don't love people no more you realize if you see another human being who you need to talk to you gotta die you realize you, you're done you don't have anything within you your ministry is over and so this is what people do is they end their home groups they stop evangelizing and many people take a break even from the church because they hit a season where their love for God dries up I mean, I'm sorry their love for people dries up we all experience that all of us for me it happened many years ago when people that gotten saved walked away from the Lord and those who joined our ministry left and it seemed like in few months everyone was gone and I became not only burdened I became burned out and I felt like at the age of 20 something my ministry was over and I was like God it's over it is done little did I knew that God was waiting for my compassion for people to run dry so he can give his burden see my burden for people gets over his burden is light and when I was coming to the end of my natural burden, I was saying, God, it's over. And God was saying, we haven't even started. He said, I haven't even started. We haven't even healed anybody. Everything that's been going on now is you bringing donkeys and pigs and motorcycles to church. He says, that's been you running this and you've done an awesome job. Hasn't been working so well, but you did good. And now that you've come to an end of you, Let's begin. I want to bring my burden. Means you no longer care for people because you're a caring person. But because the caring spirit gives you strength. And then he says my anointing becomes to be released because of that burden. And I, I started to see how it's no longer just was my gift, my skill, my burden. It was something my burden came to an end. And the Holy Spirit was waiting so he could give me his burden and his anointing. That the ministry doesn't grow because I am eloquent speaker. But because the anointing of the Holy Spirit heals people, delivers people and touches people's lives. His burden many times will come into your life when your burden comes to an end and many of us quit when our burden comes to an end we say I got burned out we don't experience supernatural many times until our natural comes to an end many of us quit instead of Holy Spirit saying let me add now my super to your natural and let's create a supernatural I want to challenge every person for those of you who maybe in the past few years You've been a home group leader and you burned out. It's okay not to have a home group. It's never okay not to have a burden. Maybe you've stopped witnessing. Maybe you don't go witnessing no more. I'm okay with that. Don't live without a burden. Maybe you're not preaching no more or not as involved in certain ministry no more. I'm fine with that. Don't ever live without a burden. If you live without a burden, I'm sorry, if you live without a burden, your life will become in bondage. I see people all the time who say, I don't want to have just kind of, I want to take a break. I want to take easy. Next thing that happens is those are the people who quickly find themselves. Today, they need freedom. And tomorrow, you see they are in bondage to first simple things and then sins and then bigger things. We experience freedom when we get delivered. Uh, when we experience rest, when we get delivered, we experience rest when we get a yoke and a burden and lastly Jesus said learn from me and you will find rest for your soul when rest comes from learning or growing because when we learn we grow when we grow we learn when you learn you grow when you grow you experience more freedom Jesus has attached freedom not just to your prayer he attached freedom to your process of growing one of my favorite examples of what it's like to be a christian is a tree of palm, palm tree we don't have them here in florida where i would visit sometimes they would tell me a little bit about the palm trees a palm tree is a very unique tree for many many reasons and i have a message once that i preached but palm tree has this very interesting thing where if you take a palm tree and you bind the palm tree when it's young you know to keep it straight you put a chain around it the chain will stay there but as the palm tree will grow 
the palm tree unlike the other trees which will allow the robes and chains to grow into it the palm tree as it grows no matter how the strong the chain is it will always break bands chains and robes around it it will not allow the chain to grow inside apple tree is not like that if you put a rope around a young apple tree as the tree grows it adapts to the rope and many times you will see this tree that that the that, that the tree is going like this and then there's this little bend where the rope is still there the palm tree when it's young you can put a rope around it but as it grows it will not allow the rope to grow into it it will snap it and that's exactly where some people experience freedom when you're young satan sees you're still not experienced you don't know about healing you don't know about deliverance and he puts different bands around you and so your focus is to break free but sometimes you can't break free but you shouldn't stop growing you can't break free the devil says well because you still got few bands around you don't go to church on Sunday because it's not for you listen you're a palm tree if you keep growing you will snap and break every single thing that you don't allow to define your life can somebody say amen your issue is not your identity what you're struggling with is not who you are you are not an apple tree you are not just an orange tree you're a palm tree that means Jesus says as you grow you find rest you find freedom you find new life don't let the devil lie to you that just because you still got few things that are ropes hanging around you that you shouldn't be going to church that's why you need to be going to church so as you grow you become more free can somebody say amen, amen. when we learn we become more free knowledge is power in Peter it says the following verse Apostle Peter says that he says that as his divine power has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness so godliness means that you live a holy life life means you live successful life in your marriage in your finances in your health God's power has given given is not God will God has given means you already have that amen he has given us all things pertaining to power and godliness and uh, to life and godliness and then this is the word through the knowledge of him means what unlocks what's already mine is knowledge as i know more as i learn more my life begins to receive of what i already have been given when i learn more about healing God doesn't give me more healing it's just I have access to the healing that's already been given when I learn more about freedom how Holy Spirit wants to use me in bringing freedom to others God doesn't give me more freedom he actually lets me now use more of what's already been mine what's been given to me by his power that's one of the reasons you have to do your best to begin to enlarge your knowledge and your information without knowledge people perish you become free because you know it's just a story that I shared once when one guy had a problem with pipes in his business and and he hired this professional who came to fix the piping and the professional walked around walked around and then found this pipe and took a small little hammer hit the pipe and the problem was fixed and then gave him a bill for one thousand dollars the owner freaked out he's like I ain't paying a thousand dollars for you to walk around my business and hitting one pipe he said yes you are he said you're paying one dollar for hitting the pipe but you're paying nine hundred ninety nine dollars for knowing where to hit <laughs> knowledge is not power knowledge accesses power knowledge is the faucet see the water is connected to your house is already there when you turn on the faucet the water that city provides to you that's already connected to your house invisibly you don't see that but there's underwater everything is connected you can have as much water as you're willing to open the faucet God's kingdom says already given everything to us through the faucet of knowledge 
that's why devil will fight your knowledge he will have you listen to Beyonce and Justin Timberlake and all other lakes just so you don't get knowledge he will have you fill yourself with Netflix just so you don't get knowledge he will get you preoccupied with watching what everybody's posting on Facebook just so you don't get knowledge so you will die out of thirst having water connected to your house that's why you gotta prioritize what you was listen and watch Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God it means when I receive knowledge I access what's already been mine I access the healing I access the prosperity I access the freedom I access peace there's nothing wrong with listening to music, watching movies, but if that is all that you are doing, you must understand the power is being jammed and God isn't the problem. The key is knowledge. Can somebody say amen? amen. We learn from three things. We learn from our mistakes. Number two, we learn from our mentors. Number three, we learn from our master. People in the world learn from mistakes. Mistakes teach you a lesson after they hit you hard and sometimes you're bleeding so hard you're not ready to listen. That's why many people never learn from their mistakes because you're bleeding so hard you're like I don't want to hear. Mentors teach you a lesson before you get burned so you avoid getting burned. That's mentors. But master he doesn't only teach you a lesson he empowers you to fulfill that lesson in his life. And Jesus said, he didn't just say, watch me. He said, learn from me. I raised the dead. Learn from me how to do that. I prayed, even though I'm God, I didn't need to pray. But I lived a life of prayer. Learn from me how to pray. I focused on large crusades, yet I always developed a small group of people. Learn from me how to impact the nations, yet disciple few. When a critic criticized me, I didn't fight them back because they didn't want to hear a response. They just wanted to eat and just attack more on me. I kept my mouth silent. Learn from me. Because lions don't lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. Caravan doesn't stop because the dog is barking. Learn from me. Jesus says, learn from me. My first miracle in the synagogue was casting out of demons. I got blasphemy for casting out of demons. I got criticized for casting out of demons. I still did it learn from me every miracle got scrutinized and people said it was fake and when they could disprove the miracle they said you did it the wrong way and the wrong date and you used the wrong methodology I still heal people learn from me learn from me the way we the reason why we pray for the sick is because Jesus left us an example to follow the reason why we save the lost and raise home groups is because Jesus left us an example to follow. The reason why we cast out demons and break curses is because Jesus left me an example to follow. The reason why we have large conferences and we can get criticized because criticism is the price for success, Rick Warren said. And the more success you have, the more criticism that you will get. And in the midst of that, you still have to push through and do what Jesus called you. Why? Because if Jesus did it, he gives me an example. And the reason why we're believing also for people to be cleansed from leprosy, lame to walk, deaf to hear, blind to see, dead to be raised, and demons to be expelled, Jesus said, learn from me. He is my example. I love my denomination. I love the brothers and sisters that, that we are undercovering with. But my example is not my bishop. My example is not my apostle. My example is the captain of my salvation. Who conquered death, who conquered sin, who conquered hell. And who is coming back again as a king of kings and lord of lords. This Jesus is going to heal people today. This Jesus was buried but on the third day he rose again. This Jesus taught the kingdom of God for 40 days and then he went to heaven on the cloud. And this Jesus came back in the power of the Holy Spirit a few days later and a rushing mighty wind touched the cowardly disciples of his who were so shaken by his death that they abandoned and betrayed him. But they became the people who changed the world. This Jesus is in our midst today. This Jesus collects every tear that you cry at night. This Jesus sees your seizures and he sees the attacks and he sees how the medicine cannot help you and cannot advance no more that tumor or that cancer cell in your body. This Jesus not only sympathizes but at the whisper of his name. 
demons tremble he went to hell and he took the keys back from the devil and he slapped the devil with defeat and he lives inside of me he lives inside of you and today the devil is going to be defeated one more time today the sickness will be defeated one more time I want you to shake off every dust shake off every discouragement shake off everything that I've tried and, and 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 this is already not working shake off your agreement with the sickness that that is how you're gonna live for the rest of your life the Holy Spirit is in this room and the Holy Spirit didn't come to put a stamp on your affliction he came to rip that thing off and to give you freedom amen